Hello, I am Councilwoman LaShawn Burr Danley, and I'm here with my colleague. Councilman Samuel Davis. I tell you, Councilman Davis, can you believe that we are here again another year celebrating black history in the city of Douglasville? LaShawn, time passes, and I believe it, and I'm ready. <laughs> well, I tell you, um, so who do we have today? I mean, who, what are we going to talk about? Well, today we're going to talk about the history of uh, entertainment, Black education music with um, one of our guests, Myrna Clayton. Well, I tell you what, um, Councilman Davis, we have a lot of artists right here in the city of Douglasville. Some that I am sure people are not aware of, and they may or may not be. But that's that's pretty your um, that's your ballpark. You actually have been doing the Wednesday wind down for how long mm -hmm. now? It's going its second season, and. Uh, I mostly deal with our local artists because we have so many great artists here in the city of Douglasville mm -hmm. that you know that you never would have thought of. We have BB and CC Whining, uh, bass player here. There's oh, a wow. lot of artists. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. So you've actually captured um, the ear of a lot of listeners. Um, I've actually been um, at a couple of the Wednesday Wines Down and I didn't see, I mean, I saw a lot of, of people, um, African American, um, different um, young people, seniors, uh, people that came out from, from everywhere. And um, what inspired you to do that? Well, you know, we're so close to the city and I had a lot of complaints about going downtown, the winds and wind down. So I said, well, I just started here with my expertise and the uh, individual artists that I know here and then I got permission from the city. and. Uh, this is our second season. It has been really, really great. Each season, I hope to bring new entertainment. And this season, we had new entertainment. We had some great artists, like I said, BB and CC Wine and bass player. And uh, we had Milkshake, which this is the first season here in Myrna, first season with our orchestra. So, Well, I am so excited, um, Councilman Davis, that we are going to talk about the artist um, the art of music mm -hmm. right here in the city of Douglasville. How exciting, how exciting. It's yes, going to be and, fun. And with you being a uh, gospel singer, and I heard you do some R&B, and with being, <laughs> me being a musician and uh, professional DJ, so we're going to put all this together, and it's going to be fun. Right. Okay. Stay tuned. Thank you. You're going to enjoy this. tell you we have our first guest here um, Mr. James Bignon I almost said Reverend but um, Mr. James yes. Bignon who is with us mm -hmm. during our uh, black history program the art of music is what we're focusing on this time mm -hmm. I'm with my colleague um, Councilman Davis yeah, I want to thank James for coming out it's my pleasure thank you, thank you very much my pleasure being I tell here. you I love mm -hmm. that voice well let's get right down thank to you. it yes. um, James we actually called you in and um, had the pleasure of interviewing you on um, our city TV, the city of Douglasville. And our focus that we wanted to begin with is gospel. And we know that um, you are definitely a just a downright good <laughs> gospel singer. Thank you. Can you please tell us how how did you um, how did how did you get to where you are now? Well, actually, uh, it, it started from uh, from my mother. Yeah. <laughs> actually. You know, I was inspired by her and uh, my father. Both of them were musicians in the church. And uh, and I wanted to, you know, as children for the most part, I want to be like the parents right. for the most part. And then uh, loving gospel music and listening to the music through the years, I had an aspiration to 
follow other recording artists and listening to the various techniques. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and eventually the opportunity presented itself to me through the Gospel Music Workshop and then uh, Workshop of America, uh, which was at that time, which certainly was founded by the late Reverend Dr. James Cleveland. Oh. And, uh, and I'm still affiliated, still a member with, uh, of that organization. And uh, from there, meeting a lot of people, then I met with uh, met Reverend Milton Bigham, mm. who was the, the founder of the Georgia Mass Choir. He asked me about, uh, being, about considering taking the helm of that, of, of that newly organized group that he was thinking about. And we did that in, uh, uh, in 1983. Wow. And uh, he, call, he called me to, uh, to be a part of that, and I was with them from 83 to 1990, and uh, we were Grammy nominated, and uh, wow. we, uh, we had a wonderful tour together. They're still in existence. I recorded with them earlier. Uh, this year, we have a new project that's going to come out next year, mm -hmm. and the song I wrote, uh, I wrote and recorded with them is uh, uh, "Put Every uh, <laughs> Put Your Trust in God." <laughs> what? Put your trust in God, and uh, he and I recorded it together. It turned out wonderfully. Wow, that wonderful. is so isn't that awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, Thanks. now gospel is just like my heartbeat. But you, so you've done all that, and so so tell me who have or tell us who have you actually had a chance to to perform with, or let me say minister. That, that's more appropriate. Yes, well, uh, with the uh, late Reverend Dr. Cleveland, okay. uh, with uh, uh, late Reverend Isaac Douglas, so basically I, I came up under the, tra the traditional uh, music time frame. And then, as you know, through the years now, uh, music has transitioned. You know, we still have the traditional music, but a lot of the focus now is primarily on uh, praise and worship, mm -hmm. you know, on urban gospel and contemporary music. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, traditional music is still there, you know, but again, as far as the industry is concerned, uh, a lot of it, a lot of, uh, a lot of the contemporary and praise and worship is highlighted for, especially for, for this young, for the younger generation, mm -hmm. you know, but, but all music is still acceptable and still utilized in the uh, churches uh, nationwide. Right. You know, it's amazing that you would say that, mm -hmm. um, Councilman Davis, you, you agree with this or comment as well, mm -hmm. the traditional, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I love gospel music, I love the urban, I love the contemporary, but mm -hmm. there is something about the amazing grace. Exactly. There's something exactly. about the, the precious Lord, and, and speaking right. of precious Lord, Thomas Dorsey, Thomas you know, Dorsey, was right, right there in Villarica. And, and tell us, can right. you expound a little bit about just right. the Thomas Dorsey and what you know from Well, uh, the, uh, Thomas Dorsey is uh, the author of the, he's m more so known for Precious Lord, Take My Hand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, being, uh, uh, there's, a, there's a convention, his name, but uh, the Thomas Dorsey Convention of uh, uh, choirs and choruses, oh. you know, and uh, we're, we're excited about that history, that legacy. Also, from Thomas Dorsey, you had the connection with Sally Martin, mm. which is also uh, uh, a traditional writer, and James Cleveland was also came up under. Uh, oh, wow. Thomas Dorsey. So you have that branching from him. You have the caravans, and you have so many of the other traditional artists that uh, that stem from uh, Thomas Dorsey. Mm -hmm. And he's, you know, the founder. We consider him, you know, pretty much the founder of gospel music. Right. You know, and uh, and James Cleveland was dubbed once the prince of gospel music, mm. and then the king of gospel music, mm. with the popularity. And then you have, you know, uh, various artists that have come up. After Afterwards, and Thomas Dorsey is, is certainly he's the foundation. Wow! Considered the foundation of traditional gospel music. Well, let's take it a little further back. What about the note singers? You I don't know, know if I can go that far. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little beyond my time. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, I, I remember as a little girl, my mom loves note singing, yeah. and I remember she would take us and we'd listen to note singing. This is yes. when I was younger, yes. and actually during that time, I was thinking, you know, what time are they going to be over? But now <laughs> right. I can really appreciate it. Absolutely. I can appreciate it. And and what has been your experience with that? Well, um, when I was born, I was born in Savannah, Georgia, and lived in, and lived a lot of my younger life in Augusta, Georgia. 
and my grandfather was a pastor during those days they had one service a Sunday mm. so he was pastoring four churches Wow and uh, there there were some instances where there were some groups that were uh, there were uh, note singers mm -hmm. and you had to have an ear for music mm -hmm. you know it was it was really it was a prerequisite for it because again you you don't have the the covering of uh, instruments and back then you know the you didn't have a lot of instruments you uh, the condition of the instrument at the church at that time was what you had to deal with mm. you know and you were hoping and praying that it was <laughs> <laughs> that it was in good condition right, you know, right. uh, there was no such thing as electric keyboards mm. and you can just pack it up and take it with you mm. wherever you go so you'd always have uh, uh, instruments that are pitched to A440 you know you don't have that wow. uh, anymore but uh, but now the, the music has changed so you know but but again the foundation with the note singing was wonderful uh, and you and it also required you to listen mm. you know because there was nothing else there was nothing to cover it it was just right there plain and simple and, and I love it as well it is it's quite impressive it's impressionable and again you know it's a part of it's a part of the traditional music legacy Wow and you know just knowing you and, and Councilman Davis I'm sure James you are very serious about music. absolutely I mean when I say serious I mean very serious and why yes. is that tell, tell me why well is it's uh, when I was at the when I was nine years old I was leading a song in Augusta Georgia my mother was uh, my mother was a musician f for this uh, choir that was existing at that time called the Faith of Charity Choir and I was leading a song can't remember the song for the life of me but when I was singing this song at nine years old this young lady began to praise the Lord and I, and it and it threw me. Why are you why are you doing this? And the, and it created my it, it, it sparked my interest. What made this happen? You know, and why are, uh, and, and what would make it happen again? Is it something I'm doing, or is it something that, that is this a connection? Is it the way I did it, the way I sang it? So you know, I did a lot of I did a lot of uh, introspection. Uh, uh, just checking myself out uh, and also listening to various techniques on what would tend to spark those types of responses mm -hmm. because that seemed to be the, the what the public was looking for to say oh man that song was just fantastic you had to get a response you know as in now with praise and worship you know you you're looking for the hands to raise you're looking mm -hmm. for the hallelujah you you know you know people to be brought into worship mm -hmm. you know and uh, and you're looking for a visual response uh, as a as a clue uh, or as a cue to your being your music being uh, uh, presented effectively mm -hmm. if people are just sitting there then you're wondering you know are you effective or not but but that response that was the beginning of my interest and from there I wanted to I wanted to uh, be serious about my music I didn't want to just sing because again with my grandfather being a pastor mm -hmm. uh, and, and with my mother being so and my father being so involved in music there had to be more to it than just singing songs because if this young lady responded like that there was something that helped to make a change right you know that would bring her closer to Christ mm -hmm. or, or wanting to wanted to have a closer relationship and that's the way I wanted to deliver my music well be it and now uh, be it traditional at that time or now being the praise and worship feel or what happened Wow so we're so you're talking about the anointing the anointing like in exactly. first Corinthians the 13th chapter it, it talks yes. about um, being a um, 
a tinkling cymbal. Right, sounding brass. Sounding brass. Or tinkling cymbal. Or a right. tinkling cymbal and, right. and not wanting and not to be. Not wanting to be that. The, right. 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 Not wanting to just sing, but you also have to live the life that you're singing about. And you have to be able to not, not only live the life, but if you're ministering to people, you want to minister effectively where they would be able to say, if I could sing, mm -hmm. I would sing it just like that. That's it. That's it, what'd you say? Yeah. That's good. Well, wrap it up. Well, ask, you know, I, I got a question, Jane. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of gospel festivals and concerts outside, and uh, which you've been on the concert up in Marietta yes. when we do Juneteenth. And, uh, yes. Juneteenth. And, and the crowd be real good, but as soon as we do some gospel rap, <laughs> the crowd, it don't hold the crowd. They go mm -hmm. to Tennessee and just scatter. Mm -hmm. And I wonder what, how can we educate those young gospel rappers to incorporate, listen to some of Kurt Franklin stuff, mm -hmm. and step it up just a little, and and uh, sort of just go in and get your beats and rap. Well, I think yeah. that brings, and if I may, if, if, yeah. if I may, that brings us into like our last part of this interview. Tell us what do you, what do you do specifically to help? artists and, and churches and your, during your travel, what is it that you do? Well, well, you, you know, for, for years, almost 30 years now, I've been doing training seminars mm -hmm. uh, nationwide and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, trying, to, trying to enlighten people that are involved in music ministry mm -hmm. to, to understand uh, the broader picture, mm -hmm. you know, as to is not just about it's not just about you and you loving the song you can love a song to death but if that song only stops right here and it's not permeating if it's not reaching the people if they can't identify if they can't identify with the song I would say with it as they say in terms of selling a record you know uh, uh, getting the attention of the listener you need to get that attention within the first 10 seconds That's right. of the song. You know, if you're not capturing their attention, if they have to wait until the back end of the song, you may you may lose them, especially if it's a recording, you lose them because they'll change the station. That's mm -hmm. right. You know, so you have to get them in the front. As far as as far as rap uh, that you as uh, that you're asking, it's even though it's a different style of music, mm -hmm. it still requires the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to capture your listener's attention. You have to now with rap, the beat is what tends to catch the young, the young people. Right, right. You know, it's the beat they get. But once you get their attention, you have to have a message. Mm -hmm. And you, it's not just about, it's not just about jumping around. You know, just bouncing around across the stage. When they finish with the material, when you finish with the material. What will the people leave with? If, if your moment ends when the song ends, something is wrong. That's right. <laughs> exactly. Something is wrong. Wow. I tell you, you know, this, I wish we had more time. I, I really wish we had more time. But just in closing, can you just give us a little bit? nudge and give our audience a nudge if, if if there's a church out there that's looking for a workshop or an individual that's looking for something how can yes. how can they reach you and oh, also right. where where you where are you on sunday mornings oh yeah oh sunday mornings i'm at if i'm in town that's a girl. <laughs> i'm at pleasant grove that's Missionary a girl. Baptist that's church. Right. okay all right right in marietta mm -hmm. and uh to Answer the answer the question about uh, wait a minute what was that if if there's someone in our audience if oh, there's if a they pastor were reaching, or some, right, right. How do they seven reach seven you? zero six three five seven four four five seven seven zero <laughs> six three five seven four four five email is james big james dot big non b i g n o n at yahoo dot com I'm also on Facebook. You know, oh, wow. so look me up. Love to love to communicate with you. Love to, love to have you as my friend. Love to come and do workshops. Also, let me give you another number to my agency, okay. and that's Langley Associates. And uh, that number is 678-376-8000. 678-376-8000. Love to come minister. Love to come and uh, do a, a training seminar mm -hmm. at your church. Or if you think my ministry might bless another church somewhere, you know, please share it.
Right. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. And this the CD is, oh, is you know, out. I have oh, your release. New project. Yes, yes, yes. 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 <laughs> my latest release mm-hmm. is entitled The Masterpiece. Mm-hmm. It's a project of variety. It has a, a couple of traditional, a couple of praise and worship songs, and also my sons, James and Chris. Oh. They wrote a song and recorded it with me titled He is God. And, and, and we're just excited about it. You know, check it out. Check it out. That's you awesome. Can, you can download it on iTunes. Uh, oh, uh, it's, wow. It's, it's internet available. Internet available. That's awesome. I'm going to get that. Please do. Right after Please this do. interview, we you have a break. You think you can give us a little, just a little hum or something? No, uh, we're going to wait. For okay, we're Thank you so right. much. I'm going to get you on my iPod. Thank you so Thank much, you, love, um, love Mr. Big Nun. We are very pleasure. delighted. My okay. Pleasure. All right. Thank have you. a good one. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. We serve an awesome God and it's always good to take time to just praise Him and bless Him for who He is. Big enough to be everywhere. Personal enough that when I need Him, He's there. Awesome God that He is. He loves me. I know you can say the same. Heaven and earth proclaim His majesty. His handiwork is written in life's tapestry. Awesome God that He is. So glad He loves me. Yes, he does. And I give him praise every chance I get. My life celebrates who he is. Let every voice be raised for who he is. He's the matchless. He's the matchless Lamb of God. That's who he is. Yes, it is. Oh, bless his name. Mm-hmm. I kept writing. It's amazing all he does for me. I'm so unworthy, but still he keeps on blessing me. Awesome God, awesome God that he is. I'm so glad he loves me. He loves me, he loves me, yes, I give him praise for who he is. My life every day celebrates, let every voice be raised, be raised for who, who the Savior is. He's my everything. My is he yours? My life celebrates who, who he is. Let every voice be raised for who, who he is. He's the matchless. He's the matchless Lamb of God. He is the matchless Lamb of God. Yes, welcome back to the uh, to the next segment. And today is our special guest is uh, Milkshake, and glad to have you. 
Nice to be here. And Ms. Shank, <laughs> my colleague, Ms. LaShawn Bradanley. I am definitely honored. Happy to meet you also. Thank you. As one of our special guests, he's a resident here in this city of Douglasville. And I've met him a long, long time ago. <laughs> and um, we go a long way back, some of the special people that we have played in different places, like Golden Horn and different eras. And uh, LaShawn, I'll let you start it off. I tell you, I, I'm not going to ask how long ago, Sam, because you know you were born before me, so we won't, we won't go there, right? Okay, well, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Again, um, Milkshake, I am, I am <clears throat> delighted. I'm Councilwoman LaShawn Burdanley. And we had a little bit of reminiscing prior to um, us coming on uh, the set. Right. So first, I'd like to just ask, you're, you're resident right here in the city of Douglasville? Right here in Douglasville. Wow. And you know what? I am so embarrassed I didn't know that. But I'm so glad that you're here. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Why don't you tell us just a little bit about, um, I understand that you're, you're a trumpet player? Yes, I'm a... I majored in music. Uh, I'm a trumpet player. I play some of everything, but my main instrument is trumpet and flugelhorn. Okay, okay. Uh, born in Tacoa, Georgia. Grew up in Atlanta, Georgia. Went to school, you know, elementary, high school, and college in Atlanta. Okay. So, and then just ventured out and started uh, playing my music. Wow. So, what inspired you? How did you get into music? Growing up, I didn't have any brothers and sisters. I'm, I'm an only child. Okay. So, I ran behind my uncles. So one of my uncles uh, was a mechanic. So being around the garage, watching them fix cars and stuff, and I picked that up. That's why I, I restore antique, build antique cars. What? Then <laughs> my other uncle and uncle were morticians. So being around the, you know, the funeral home, watching all that and everything. <laughs> so I picked that up from them. So I worked with Willie Watkins Funeral Home. Okay. Then my other uncle was a musician with, uh, started out with Bobby Bird and James Brown. All of them started out together. So me watching them get ready, you know, Friday and Saturday night, going out, doing the getting dressed, shining the shoes and all what? this kind of stuff. And I'm like, you know, I'm going to do that. And then I used to watch him play his horn. And for whatever reason, the trumpet was, um, I think it was just a natural thing that I was supposed to do. Mm -hmm. Because before I even got a trumpet, I would walk home from school. <laughs> this is before I even picked up a trumpet. Are you serious? I kid you not. Wow. And I got a trumpet, and the rest is kind of like history. Wow, that is so awesome. So you were actually in the presence of James Brown? Yes. Uh, his son, one of his son and I were in grade school together. Wow. And he would actually come, you know, come to the city sometime, and he'd come in and have on his cape and <laughs> process hair. I mean, he was, he, was, he was hot. Oh, yeah, I love know, James Brown. He was hot. Yeah. And we all used to, you know, I mean, we just patternized, you know, just, just everything he did growing up, we tried to do. Wow. And it's it kind of funny. I was looking at an old clip one night uh, back in 68 when Dr. King was assassinated. Mm. Um, they were in, uh, I think, Philadelphia was doing a concert. And it was just to try to calm the, the people down from riding. Right. And every time I look at that film, to see James perform, he looked, well, Teddy looked just like him. That's his son? His son okay. that died, he's dead now. But to see that tape, all I see is Teddy. I wow. don't see James Brown. Cause Teddy, you talking about a clone, he was, I mean, just like he spit him out of his mouth. Wow. And when I was living here in, in Atlanta, Growing up, we had a band, it was like the, the Cool Breeze band, and we was playing around. And in Tacoa, Georgia, Teddy had a band, it was called the Torches. <laughs> and I was always jealous of them because they had so much equipment. Wow. And I found out later on, <laughs> he was getting James old equipment <laughs> you know, that, wow. they, that they had. You okay, know. Right, I mean, right. they had tons of stuff. And I'm like, but that's what it was, you know. So. Wow, that is so cool. Yeah. Well, you know, it's just amazing that we are doing the art of music right now and, and focusing on black history, African Americans, um, right here in the city of Douglasville. Okay. So what have you done locally in the city of Douglasville? You said you mentioned Willie Watkins. Yes, uh, I work with Willie Watkins Street on home. Um, I've played around a number of spots here. There used to be a spot down on uh, Highway 5 with Sassafras. Oh, that's right. Okay. I played there for a while, and then uh, I've done the, the Wednesday Wind Down here. Yeah, oh, that's thank your gig. you. Yeah. That's so, your gig, so, matter of fact, I've done a couple of concerts out here, so, <laughs> okay. and they, they have been very, very nice. So, yes, does that mean I you're going to come back? Whenever they call me, I'm All ready. All right. 
Thank you. I was you so know. fascinated when you took on the Saturday night concert. I met your mother and she giving me details of how you growing <laughs> up. And I was just <laughs> laughing. And what really fascinated me, when you did that sash bow without the horn, that <laughs> I said, oh my God, this man here is just incredible. So did you practice that? No. It just uh, comes natural? It just, it just comes natural. Wow, so it's like it's an anointing. It is, it yeah. really is. Because yeah. I, really you know, I, I believe, and we touched on, we've touched on this a lot, because I, I sing gospel, mm -hmm. and I have a, a deep passion for, for music. Um, and Councilman Davis, of course, you know, he's the sound, and he plays the drums. And when we were talking about doing, um, what we were going to talk about this year, for Black History Month, it was we would be remiss if we did not talk about music. Okay. And just hearing what you you're saying, and, and just going back to the anointing, you say you just do it natural. Um, everybody wouldn't would not be able to do that. Well, that's true. Uh, you know, there are a lot of a lot of people. You know, they ask. You know, well, when do you? Pra I mean, I really, I really don't have a lot of time to practice. You know, uh, back even when I was, you know, like when you work. You know, you go to work every day. And you, you come home, you're really not in the mood. You, you don't feel like practicing. <laughs> you know, but thank God I gig a lot. So it's like I'm always playing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I might get an idea sometime, you know, and I might pick the horn up and then just work on it or whatever. But the, the majority, it just, it just, it's just a, a gift from God. Wow, wow. You know, people call, they'll say, call a song and say, you know, such and such, you know, such and such. No, but I, I've heard it before. Let's try it. And once they start playing, mm -hmm. and then and it just it just I hear it. Wow! You know, I just I just hear. It. I mean, you know, I, I got a pretty good ear, but you know, I, I, I was you know trained. I have a degree in music, so so you read music. I read music, and you also I, like have, I said, the I have, I have a degree, yeah. And you you can hear and just play. Yeah. So do you do you have any programs or anything that you offer to to youth or children at this time, or any hands-on? Um, occasionally, I go out to schools and do seminars and stuff. I thought I was going to teach school for a while, you know, and <laughs> I realized I'm going to end up going to jail because... <laughs> Me too. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a different breed. It's a different breed. It's a different breed. <laughs> but you know what? We still need you. We still need you. <laughs> I'm there for the, the ones that really, really want to learn. Mm -hmm. And I remember uh, some years ago, I went and did a, a thing out in Decatur to school. And the little guys come in, you know, with the pants sagging down and all that. And I told them, I said, okay, you, 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 y'all can go. And said, well, why? I said, there's nothing I can really teach you because y'all don't even know how to wear your clothes. You know? mm. So you don't even listen to your parents about that. So I know you're not going to listen to me. So this is wow. what I got to tell you, just a little bit too heavy. They're serious. And they would go out and a few minutes later, they'd come back okay. with the clothes pulled up. You're not going, I challenge all the men a lot of time when I'm out, I, you're not going to be in my circle dress like that and okay. represent yourself okay. like that. I agree with that. Mm -hmm. That's I agree. right. I agree. You know, it's just not going to happen. I wasn't raised that way and it's not, you, you can't be around me like that. Wow. So you're really serious about music and what you do. Oh, very. Music is so, it's spiritual and you got to respect it. And if you look at back in the days when Diz and Miles and all those cats performed, I mean, you saw them I remember the first time uh, somebody had to bring this back to my attention because I had forgotten I had played with Duke Ellerton when I was a freshman at Clark College. Wow. And this cat walked out, had on this velveteen jacket. He walked out on stage, and I'm like, God, dog, oh, that dude shot. I mean, he was just <laughs> suave, smooth. I said, I'm like, nah, that's, that's how you can make it. And right. the guys back then, they dressed. When they hit the stage, they respect the music. So it's mm -hmm. like, if you look good, you gotta sound good. You know mm -hmm. you better. You better, you know. That's and, right. And it's just a thing. I mean, I, I, my cats when they perform, in, you don't come on my set in jeans. You don't come on my set wearing sneakers. You might not have to wear a suit. Right. Because everybody's not fortunate enough, you know, to have whatever. Absolutely. Have. Mm -hmm. But if I tell you, you in time enough, you, you should have time to they find a suit, find one, depending right. on what the gig is. <laughs> you mm -hmm. serious? But you know, <laughs> no sneakers and jeans and wow. all that kind of stuff. I, you know, discipline. I, you know. I, I guess I kind of, you know, working with uh, the JBs and Bobby Bird, I really saw that discipline that James Brown had. Wow. So do you, you know, have a cake? 
I don't have no cape. You don't have a cape. You don't have a cape. I don't have a cape. cape. I don't have a cape. <laughs> don't have a cape. <laughs> but you know, I, I, I'm like that. You know, I, to a certain degree, like if, if somebody might make a mistake or whatever, you know, I'm playing. I might, I look at them and I might do like that or like that. And they know what that's a fine. It got that from Brown. Mm -hmm. And it was so funny. A few weeks ago, um, I also performed with uh, Isaac Hayes' daughter a lot. Oh. And we were out and she was doing some number. And it was like a hip hop thing. I mean, we do all kind of music, and I was, I, I really wasn't feeling it. So you know, I was just standing there, and she looked at me, and she said, "I would just." She looked at me, she said, "Move, dance." And I'm like, "I can't believe it." <laughs> then finally, she said, "I'm like." So, <laughs> <laughs> so you spoke the same language. Yeah, yeah. Well, see, she used to work with James. She used to oh, dance with James. Okay, Brown. okay. So you know, okay. I knew with that. So okay, let me throw a dance. That is really cool. That is yeah. so awesome. Well, I tell you, um. I think I had, well actually I was going to ask you about Winston Marcellus. I had an opportunity to um, see him, and I wouldn't say perform, but he was um, actually playing with um, the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra a while right. back. And have you had some dialogue and have you had a chance to reminisce with um, Winston Marcellus? Oh yeah, we go back, I think we met over in Europe in the 80s. Oh wow. And it was kind of funny, uh, I, I, I had never met him, but I had heard so much about him, how awesome he was and everything. and. And I think that was about the only time I have ever really been somewhat intimidated. Really? And finally, uh, we played in a park in um, in Paris, France. It was like a, it remind you a little bit of Piedmont Park, just how large it was. And you had these stages, five or six stages mm -hmm. in that park. So at, at every hour, you go perform on a different stage. Then you have a 30 minute break, then you go to another stage and perform. So at the end of the day, you be done performed at all the stages. Mm -hmm. So when I heard him, I'm like, okay, well, he's bad, but you know, he ain't doing nothing I hadn't heard before, you know. So, and then the next day we flew to uh, Montreux, Switzerland. Wow. And we had a concert. And then that night, we at the musician's bar, that's where all the musicians get okay. together to perform. And Brantford came in, his brother came in, and he came in, and I'm like, <laughs> and we were already up on stage playing. He came in, I'm like, oh man, oh man. I was getting, you know, <laughs> just kinda getting nervous. And I'm like, I said, nah, I can't let him run me out of here. <laughs> I don't think I have ever played that wow. hard before. So you showed out. I just, I held my own. <laughs> and That's after that, <laughs> he and I became the best of friends. Wow. Matter of fact, he gave me one of my uh, the uh, Monette trumpet, the first one of Monette trumpet oh, that I had, oh. he gave it to me. Oh, that's so awesome! So we were we we're always you know communicating that when he come to good. town. He'd go you know go to my mom's house and she fix breakfast for him. They had oh, grits and all this him kind a little of bit stuff. too. You're giving that southern oh, hospitality. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's, when he comes, like, he's home. He's that's home. awesome. That is he's so home. awesome. Well, I tell you, so what have you been doing like within the last past year? Um, where have you been? Constantly performing around town. Every Sundays, I'm out at Michonne's on Virginia Avenue. Okay. And then uh, a lot of times, Wednesdays and Thursdays, I'm out at the Sweet Georgia Juke Joint down on Peachtree. Okay. And then, like, on some Fridays and Saturdays, I'm out at uh, a Close Up 2 out at the Clarion Hotel out off of uh, Upper Riverdale Road. Wow. So, a lot of private engagements and yeah. stuff. So, I'm I'm blessed to be busy. So, you're you're out in Metro Atlanta. Yes. Yet you're in the city of Douglasville with mm -hmm. uh, Wednesday Wind Down. That's right. And one hour concert series on Saturday. And I tell you, I met his mother and his mother, she was so, I asked her, do you go to all his gigs? She said, I try to make most of them. Oh, does he really? That's <laughs> and I was just amazed. She <laughs> went. And his wife is a, is a singer. Wow. Blues jazz okay. singer. That's awesome. She's that. more gospel, but she, she, um, she uh, she sings you know the, the smooth the the traditional and all oh, that. Oh wow! That and is Reynolds cool. is at New Mountaintop, I think. The oh Barbara really? Pasta. Yeah, Reverend Sappho. Reverend Sappho. Yes, so uncle and I. Yeah. Reverend Sappho, yes. our friend. Yeah. Oh wow! You yeah. know, actually, Reverend Sappho, um, for many 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 years, have come to this um, the city council, and he has actually um, led prayer. Okay. And he's actually he still does that. Okay. But now they have um, Pastor Littman, mm -hmm. who is their pastor. Uh, pastor Salfo is definitely dear to my heart. Oh yeah. yeah oh dear yeah. To my oh heart. yeah. Wow, that's so cool. What a small world. Very small. You live in Douglasville. You're playing Metro Atlanta. You know people as far as um, 
you've known James Brown, his son, Duke Ellington, Winston Marcellus. Mm -hmm. You've been to the Wednesday Wind Down. Wow. And then you said you're going to come back. <laughs> any, any time. Wow. Any time. That's great. And tell us one of the most exciting moments you ever had being a musician. Oh, that's a good question. Um, I, I, I think it was doing the Coretta Scott King home going. Can well, you think of was, something a little better than that? I oh, think tell us about it. Can, can you just tell us a little bit about that mm -hmm. experience? With, just being with, uh, Coretta? With, yes. Well, that, um, growing up in Atlanta, I, I grew up at Ebenezer Baptist Church. So the King family is like, family to me because okay. uh, Yolanda and I used to date way back you mm -hmm. know when we were kids and stuff wow. so I grew up in that within the family so when uh, she passed and uh, we had the body at uh, the funeral home and I came in that day and I think I was I was I was in the back dressing uh, late in she came when she came out out of the, uh, the arrangement room mm -hmm. and she looked at me and she came to me and we hugged each other and, and she told me that they were going to do a, a concert and stuff like that and wow. wanted to know if I would participate. I said, just call me. Oh, how could you say no? Um, no, you couldn't do it. It's family. Right. Right. Yeah, it's right. family. So, you know, the rest is history, you know, from that. So it wow. was... Wow. It was just just amazing. You have a lot of history. I've been a blessed. Lot. I used to, believe it or not, I used to robe Dr. King. Are you serious? I used to robe Dr. King when I was a little kid. I was a little. I was in the Boy Scouts. Wow! And that was one of my jobs, in the you know at the church. I had a key to uh, the pastor study. Matter of fact, I had a key to all the all the rooms at the church. Now, and you the know, education you don't building. get a key to the pastor study. So you <laughs> I, were special. One of my jobs, I uh, had to keep water, you know, in oh. the in the picture in the pastor study. Mm -hmm. So when it's time for him to go in the pulpit, I robe him, and then Daddy King, I put his rubbers on and stuff for baptism. Wow. Mm -hmm. So. And then now look, and you're still involved. Still involved. And and, and had a full time job as a model bus driver. Wow. And retired. But yeah, now this blessed. is what you're doing full time. This is what I'm doing full time. So if you're going to inspire uh, one of our, any artist, not just black, but an artist that is coming aboard and really want to um, go out there and, and get involved and do, what would you tell them today? Study the craft. Study their instrument, know their instrument, know the music. Know what you're trying to play and research the music. You, you, you can't play anything if you don't know where it came from. And just, you really have to be strong about it and sincere about it. And mm -hmm. you, you gotta respect it. You can't take it lightly. I, I'm always like, you know, I pray before I do every gig. You know, if I don't mm -hmm. do it verbally, I do it mentally. It's just a thing. It was so funny before I left my wife and she said, well, make sure you do it good, because I didn't know what I was going She said, make sure you do a good job and uh, be serious about it. You know, be, uh, be you know, I'm like, Always, always, always. You know, because wow. I, I don't take it for granted. I do right. not take it for granted. Because, I mean, it, it's just amazing how things can shut down just like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was so funny. I was uh, early. I was out getting some leaves up in the yard, and my foot got tangled on mm. something, and I fell. Wow! And I caught myself before I hit the ground. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, I said, "Man, what if I bust my lip?" Right. I mean. Mm -hmm. Freak accident. We're all one mm -hmm. step away. You're, mm -hmm. We're all a one step from being whatever, whatever. Right, right. You know, mm -hmm. so I just thank God that he has anointed me with this gift. Mm -hmm. and I mean, I, I know it's a gift because even when I play, a lot of times I don't know, I don't really know how I'm going to play it, but when I get into it, it's like when, we, when I did do that thing for the King Celebration, uh, we were doing Precious Lord and uh, another tune, I can't even think of the name, but Dear Lord. Mm -hmm. And when we got into it and it started, I don't even, I really, I don't even remember wow. the concert. I don't even remember You're it. You were caught up. I mean, I was just in it. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, people were talking about it, and I'm like, I, I, it was okay. I, you know, and then when I finally got a chance to see it, I'm like, wow. But doing the, doing the thing, I don't even remember it. Yeah, I've been I've been there before. Music is therapy. Yeah, you know, it really it's therapy. Spiritual. It's spiritual. It, it helps very with spiritual. Um, get, it's that inner peace that very you have. So. That inner peace. That old thing, you know, that the, the thing that said, you know, the music comes a savage beast. It does. Wow. It does. 
Could you explain some, uh, as being an MD in your band, what MD, what is MB? Like MD? MD? Yep. The MD is, is, is really just a musical director. Okay. You're in charge of how the show is going to go, what music, you know, what's going to be played and everything. Mm -hmm. And my thing is, uh, I just, I just, I kind of, I never really plan a lot of times, guys, what we're going to do first. I'm like, I don't know, give me a minute. And I kind of read the crowd, mm. read the feel, right. stuff like that. And then all of a sudden, as we're going along, you know, and then the songs just start. Because I never really sit down and just draw up a list. I'm going to do this song, do this song. Do. I, I, I can't really do that because I, I just I just go with the flow. Hmm. That's go with good. The flow. Is that what you do? No, I'm not the music director out at Hopewell. I'm not the music director, but do you go with the flow? Uh, yeah, when I play, uh, I never know what I'm going to do when I'm playing music. You know, like you say, you pray on it, and you have to have a good diet mm. because you, you don't have time to run off. You got to stay with it. <laughs> You're so with funny. It. So you have to have a good diet, and you have to pray. That's why I've been in a long time, in one place, 25 years. Then at the church playing 25 years, wow. so you have to, you, that craft is something serious, and you have to, you can't play with it. That's you got cool. to be sincere. I agree. And I do pray before I play any, any night. I That's pray awesome. that I have a great night. Aww. And it always turned out good. Yeah, I do yeah. too. Mm -hmm. There was something that you did before we really got into it. Some, you know, you made this little music, and we're getting ready tied up. So can you just do a little bit of, I'm not trying to like, Orchestrate. I know you have to go with the flow, but can you just go with the flow and do a little bit? Well, you know, uh, <laughs> one of my favorite things, a friend, uh, the legendary Clark Terry, he does this thing called mumbles. Uh -huh. You know, and he get into you and how to hold ski and the and the how to ski the boot and the how to hold ski and how to hold ski and how to you ski the body and you know my let's say seriously you know the how to ski. Everybody body to screw the body. Zero about everybody team. That's all now. <laughs> that is so awesome. Thank I you. tell you, this has been definitely awesome. It and has. I look forward to seeing you again at Wednesday Wind Down with well, Councilman Davis. It's and all coming back. back. We may can get you on a Christmas concert. Just invite <gasps> everybody out. Oh, let's okay. make it happen. Yeah, let's make it happen. Let's Absolutely. make it happen. Let's make it happen. Thank you so much for being present. Thank you. All right. Thank Stay you. tuned for our next segment. Crying, I want 
We have had a wonderful time interviewing all of our artists. What do you think? Yes, uh, LaShawn, it's been a real, real good, good history show. Well, I tell you, we now have in our presence Miss Myrna Clayton. Thank you so much, Miss Clayton, for being a part of our um, remembering the art of music in the city of Douglasville. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. And also, welcome back to Douglasville <laughs> on, the, on the interview. Thank right. you. Thank you. So, uh, Ms. Clinton, can you just um, give us, Councilman Davis and myself, and I know that Councilman Davis has had a lot of interaction with you right. Wednesday wind down, and, but we have some in our audience who may not know who you are. Okay. They um, may not have been able to attend Wednesday wind down, they so we'd it. like to just, they missed it. They missed <laughs> it. Oh, yeah. But you're going to do it again. Yes, right. yes. You're going to do it again. 2012. When do you actually start? Spring? Uh, summer? June, at, right after Juneteenth. Oh, okay, right after Juneteenth. That okay. Wednesday we go wide open. Wide open. Well, I tell you, just tell us a little bit about um, who you are and let our audience know, and we're just going to go from there. Okay. Um, well, I'm Myrna Clayton, and I actually am billed or marketed as a singer of American culture. I sing okay. jazz, I sing gospel, I sing. Um, R&B, soul, and even country. Well, she does it all. I, I, I'm a singer of American <laughs> culture. Wow. Um, but my true essence is I'm a jazz singer. Um, uh, I love jazz and um, grew up singing jazz. Wow. Um, my father was a minister, and when he was his most happiest was when he was in his office playing his trumpet, wow. playing jazz. 
You're kidding. And I used to think that he would go somewhere heavenly that no one else could go. And so I, that just made me love jazz even that wow. much more. That is so awesome. <laughs> so so are you local? Are you local? Are you in Metro Atlanta? I'm in Atlanta. Okay, you're in Atlanta. Yes. All right. Well, Councilman Davis, you've known Myrna for quite some time. And what was your experience with um, Mona before Wednesday Wind Down and, and currently right now? Well, Myrna Clayton incited me. I came to one of her previews in the city of Atlanta and, and she was just, she was, it was different. Mm -hmm. It was the big band era and I really, I said, wow. And when I made the contact and she said, yes. Wow, wow. <laughs> so Miss Clay, give us a little more overview of. Okay, um, you know, jazz is, is, is such a wide range of, of music. Um, and um, Councilman Davis mentioned big band. I love big band. Uh, unfortunately, there's not enough of it going mm. around in, uh, that much anymore. Um, but um, their big band is anything from a 12-piece to a 24-piece oh, orchestra wow. of musicians, and they're reading music. They're not just playing by ear; they're mm -hmm. actually reading because they obviously have to play together. Absolutely. Um, and so. Um, that music uh, was actually made very famous in the 30s and the 40s. Um, you may remember artists like Duke Ellington, mm -hmm. Count Basie, um, Cab Calloway, they all had bands. And so um, doing that style of music, swing, bebop, oh, um, wow. all of that jazz uh, type music was, was that music. Uh, singers, Ella Fitzgerald, Billy Eckstein, Sarah mm -hmm. Vaughan, um, they were doing that kind of music right. then. And to have it today, it's it's, it's just wonderful. Um, and to have musicians that can that can play it, uh, play it right. Right. <laughs> Did you see? Uh, she said, "Play it right." right. Okay. Yes. Yes. Um, it's it's just phenomenal. And so um, that's where he first um, heard me. And so I was I, I sing with actually three different uh, big band ensembles, and one actually happens to be based here um, in the Douglas County. Oh wow! Uh, West Side Wind. That's right. Uh, oh, jazz wow. um, ensemble. Okay. Um, they actually rehearse at Lithia Springs um, Baptist Church. Wow. Yes, First Baptist, yes. So I, I heard you say that there wasn't enough. And is there something that you're doing other than singing? <coughs> what can what are you doing to inspire our young people and, and for those that may not even be aware, is there something that you're doing to help inspire them? Well, um actually um there's a I'm involved in a number of different um, organizations that um, try to connect with, uh, with, with young people and expose them to music. Um, I have a special uh, place in my heart for those that are underserved populations. Oh. Um, and I won't go into much detail with that except to say that I'm a firm believer that music and art are the start of math and science. Hmm. Music is nothing but numbers. You have to count. You have, every note has has a four beat count or a five beat count or a, a, uh, you have quarter notes, half notes. It's math. Right. And for people that think that music is not math, don't understand music. And music is such a critical element in what we think of as um, as, as as defined as math. And so I, I make the connection there for young people to think that well, I'm not good at, at math and science. Can you play? Can you can you sing? Right. Then you are good wow. in math wow. and science. Wow. You know. So so are you doing um, something hands on with with the youth and? Um, yes. Um, actually, I have a, a nonprofit that's called Able to Inc. And we meet the needs of underserved populations oh, through wow. music and art. And underserved populations are as we define them as those who are in rural communities, um, those who are disabled and um, also um, those who are uh, children of inmates and those that are homeless. Oh, wow. And so those are underserved populations. And so connecting and doing things hands-on with them. Okay. As a matter of fact, um, I, um, during the holiday season of 2011, mm -hmm. um, we are doing a, uh, or did a um, event for the deaf to experience the sounds of holiday oh, music. Wow. And so different things like that, that when you say hands-on, mm -hmm. it's all about experiencing music. And my band, my, uh, my own band is called oh, the Myrna wow. Clayton Experience. Oh, this and, is so And so neat. it's about experiencing music, wow. experiencing um, love of creativity. Wow. So I tell you, uh, Councilman Davis, we have a lot of children and families who I'm sure can take advantage of, of what you're doing. So if we want our audience to, to know, how can they tap into um, getting their children and families and how, how can we get them to you? Is 
Well, um, I, I do a number of things. I, I perform, I'm a vocal coach, um, and I do um, speaking and workshops. Um, the best way to connect with me is, um, is through the internet. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. um, they can either go to um, uh, bernaclayton.com, which mm -hmm. is M-Y-R-N-A Clayton, C-L-A-Y-T-O-N.com, or they can go to um, able2.org. Able is A-B-E-L, like Able in the Bible, okay. and the number two. Dot org and so either of those websites um, they can go to to um, to then access me or I am on Facebook what? <laughs> yeah. so Facebook okay. um, I'm there too and so they can they can definitely connect with me wow there. I tell you this is so awesome um, Councilman Davis is really I mean he, you know I know that he's being quiet but I can just <laughs> feel that he yeah. is like really uh, absorbing everything that you're saying because music is his heartbeat. Yes, beat. I know. Music is also my heartbeat okay. as well. So uh, not Facebook too much, <laughs> but um, I am so excited. But tell me, tell us, um, so what have you been doing within the last year or um, just recently? Yeah, I'm excited. Thank you. I um, actually just uh, not too long ago returned from Nigeria, oh, wow. which is why I'm dressed so as I am. Right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, I was there for four weeks. Mm -hmm. um, I had actually gone there um, for a minister's conference and where I sang. Um, but in addition to that, while I was there, I... Um, re-recorded um, a single that I had done. It's called I Gotta Change. But oh. I re-recorded it there singing French. Wow. And, um, <laughs> and so I sang. The language is, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, I sang in French and I also recorded it with a talking drummer. Oh, wow. And so we've got talking drums on top of me learning to sing <laughs> French. Um, and so it was phenomenal. So I'm so excited about that. We're, gonna, we're, we're releasing that. And I'm also going to be recording the same song in Spanish and Japanese. Oh, but wow. right now, the first step was me in Nigeria recording uh, I Got a Change in French. Wow. And that was just phenomenal. Nigeria is beautiful. Wow. Um, I was not ready to come back. <laughs> was not ready to come back. Um, but it was just it was just awesome. I, I not only visited um, the, the, the area and I, I was in Lagos and so Lagos is right on oh, the water. Wow. And so um, I went to the beach and saw the beach. The, the areas are beautiful. Um, but I also, this being Black History Month, went to Badagre, which mm. is the area of Nigeria where the slave trade happened. And so oh, I went exciting. there and, and witnessed the horrific uh, oh. experiences there. Uh, that our people um, uh, went through, and um, and so it was just quite quite an educational experience for me. Too. I didn't want to just go there right. and and not take in the full experience of, of Africanism um, that connects me, you know, to and my, and my people and and the, and the horrors that our our people experience um, to what is happening that's good today there and here. Right, mm -hmm. right. You know, it is so important that not only our youth, but um, for Councilman Davis, myself, and, and even you, Ms. Clayton, to revisit as often as we can and give honor to our African-American artists from all walks of life, yes. from mm -hmm. jazz and soul, and we've talked about gospel and, mm -hmm. and blues, and, and um, I think it's so important. And with you being here with us, it's really making a difference. Well, thank really you. Really making a difference. You know, soul. We didn't. We didn't talk that much about soul, but soul is, 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 is such a. You see, I'm moving. It's, it's such. A, <laughs> Look yeah. at her. Soul yeah. is yeah. such a conglomerate <laughs> of of all of, of our music. It, it, it soul. You know, when you, when you think about it, it really is that which gets in mm. into you. And and the art soul is not new. Uh, where we have the new artists today, like um, Jill Scott and mm -hmm. Kim, right. and they're doing their thing from a soul standpoint. Um, soul um, goes back to Marvin Gaye and you know Al Green, yeah. you know, and 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 that you know the Motown era, which I, you know, which I didn't name any of them, but the Motown era, right? Um, and 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 so to be able to bring both of those time elements together um, is such a wonderful thing musically and so when I when I'm performing so I, I, I give homage as you mentioned to the originals and so I'll do uh, some old um, soul music you know the Motown um, mm -hmm. um, Stax wow. records and the Philly sound and well as bring people current um, to to the current new music with Jill Scott, Erica Badu, uh, Legacy mm. um, and so it's, it's kind of bridging 
you know, the gap. And so for those that may not necessarily have heard some, um, some of the newer things, and now I'm introducing that to them. And for those who've not oh, heard some wow. of the older things, I'm introducing some of that to them. And so, and I also like to do, because of the, the, the mix of music that I do, I like to, to blend a lot of other different flavors. For example, I'll change a, a jazz standard like Summertime and do it in a Latin feel. Oh, wow. Or change a blues song and do it in a swing feel. Mm -hmm. And so knowing the different types of music allow you to, to be versatile you know, in, in what you do. Uh, one of the things about music that I do want to emphasize is I believe that all music was created by God. Absolutely. It's the lyrics mm -hmm. that mess things up. Mm. Expound on that a little bit. Well, um, when you're listening to music, music is just, you, you're, you're feeling it. it it's, it's an experience. You're, you're, you're emotionally into it. It can take, that's why movies use it. Use it you know? right, it right. takes you on the journey wherever you're supposed to, where they, or wherever you're intended to go or desire to go. Well, then all of a sudden you attach lyrics to it. And it's at that point that the intent, possibly, of the music could change. Right. And so um, when you place uh, positive lyrics on music, then you're going in a certain direction. When you take negative lyrics and put them on that same track, it takes you someplace else. Mm -hmm. And so I really want to encourage young people to be conscientious of the words that they speak in the lyrics of the songs because um, words produce. Mm. They produce positive, they mm -hmm. produce negative. Right. Words produce. And I do agree with you. I, I agree <coughs> wholeheartedly that music was created by God. And I know we don't have much time, but we have to, you know, you can't, you just, you can't just, when you're talking about that, you can't just drop it. Mm -hmm. And actually, Lucifer, mm -hmm. um, before. Um, being the name of Satan, right. was music and Absolutely. was praise and was mm -hmm. worship. So you're correct. We really have to make sure that our children are listening and, and, and parents being responsible of what they're hearing. Do you agree? Johnson I Davis? agree. And Ms. Clayton, earlier this year, you and I and Pastor John Citizen yes. had a meeting over at uh, New Manchester we did. in that beautiful auditorium. What do you think about the beautiful auditorium? The auditorium is, is phenomenal. There's I. I don't know that there's something like it. It, it I won't say in the state of Georgia because I've not been to every place in the state mm -hmm. of Georgia, but I've not seen one like that, uh, certainly in this area, and that includes Atlanta. And our goal was working with the kids. Myrna also do stage plays. Wow. And uh, we, we was meeting with her on putting together a um, stage play with using the the youth out of all the schools oh, in the Myrna, Give us a little information that. about <laughs> that, Myrna. <laughs> I want to hang out with Ms. Clayton. <laughs> even after this, even after we do this, I want to hang out so we can, we can just continue and, and all the great things. But you know, um, locally, what what are you what are you doing locally? When I say local, I know you were here with the Wednesday Wind Down. Is there yes. anything coming up soon um, with the city of Douglasville or in the county? Actually, I'm excited to to say that in the month of March. Um, the Douglas County uh, Council of the Arts, I think it's what it's called. Cultural, Cultural Arts, Arts Center. Center. Yes, uh, we'll be featuring uh, the big band that oh, I, wow. uh, one of the big bands, the one that's here in, in Douglas County, mm -hmm. um, in a concert. And so we will be uh, performing oh, wow. um, with, uh, for them, with them. I kind of don't know the relationship mm -hmm. um, because I'm, look, I describe, I'm just a singer. <laughs> I show up and sing. I wasn't, I'm not involved in the planning, but right. I do know that it's in March and we're so looking forward. Uh, to to doing that, um, it's it's wow. going to be great. It's going to be great. This is awesome. Now yes. we have to attend that. Yes, you, you have to attend that. <laughs> you have to attend you, to hear Miss Myrna Clayton Her right name here is at the top in the city of Douglasville. This is exciting. Yes, crowded. you get to come in March. <laughs> so I tell you, Councilman Davis. Ms. Clayton, this yes. has been so exciting. Thank, Thank you, you so much for Thank your Thank you presence. so much for inviting me. All right. So Thank why don't we end on that note? That we'll you. talk afterwards. Okay. And please, audience, get involved. Remember in March that Ms. Myrna Clayton yes. will be performing right here in the city of Douglasville. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Myrna.
he said he's going. He said he's going back to find. Going back to find. Ooh, 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 what's left of his world. The world he left behind. Not so long ago. Live without 